sculptures have a sort of like potential energy, I think, and you could say that goes to kinetic once they're on the street. And once they're out there, they sort of, they're alive and you can kind of feel that space around them being transformed into a sort of an art space, you know, like the theater is happening, but there's no stage, there's no anything in the, the people that pass by are sort of actors, but it's not quite a stage, it's something something else and I think when the work really comes alive it's when these sort of surreal situations that sort of just come and go. The installations are generally surreal but all of a sudden someone will enter the stage or something will happen and you know like this one guy with the head stuck in the wall and while I was still watching I took a picture of this guy just walking down the street with his lamp and I was just how strange for this guy to be walking on the street and when the sculpture and this guy come together and it's just sort of like, wow, this whole stage is really interesting. And it's those sort of moments that I think for me are when it's really alive. It's an art project, but I think it's equally a social experiment. It's, you know, I have a science background. I studied geology and study art, and the idea of doing an experiment and recording that the data. I think even the very first experiments I did, I think they were as much that sort of more scientific social data than it was an art, art piece. And so when I put the works out. I like to take a few photos to document what's what's going on, um, but then like a, a social experiment too. You don't want to stay there because your presence contaminates that experiment because people could see you there somehow, or even just feel you. Or just being there feels like you're not getting letting it happen on its own. So I record a few photos and then I just sort of disappear. The idea just to do one figure, first off for like a street piece, like non-commissioned, like it's coming out of my own pocket, which is the way this project started. The idea to do one figure and have it, you know, disappear in a day or an hour, or whatever, a few days or a week, it's just not like economically a good idea for me to like invest this much. So I think that was one of the reasons it became a one like one sculpture installation for the most part, but you know, sometimes two things work out at the same time. So creating this one figure, it marginalized this person away from like anybody else, but since they didn't have anybody with them, they became you know, these sort of isolated figures. And I think, I think people alone always they can become invisible, but they can also become very visible. The person at a party that's not talking to anybody else, you know, and a lot of these people were like in doing things that is not normal behavior. So in these sort of abnormal situations and, you know, it kind of gives them more, more sort of electricity around that space because they're alone and they're doing something strange and in public spaces, especially like when people perceive that, then unless they like term that person like crazy or homeless, then it really starts to become a sort of perplexing situation. You know, everyone sits there and you see some exhibit, oh, I'd like to do that, I'd like to have like, you know, 50 sculptures and put them in like a semi and <laughs> try them around. The country and I told him my friends that and he's like that's ridiculous. I 
I think I was searching for some other creative outlet, but then, you know, it's just one day I was messing around with this tape. I'd created um, a metal tinfoil ball, and, you know, I decided to make a second one out of tape, but I didn't have enough tape left to make, um, like, a solid tape ball, and that's when this kind of trick of wrapping the tape around in reverse just kind of came to me. I mean, that said, I, I can remember back when I was a kid taking tape and ra wrapping it around pencils, like in reverse, and then the other way to create this cast. So it wasn't exactly like a new idea, but the idea to actually apply it to a big, bigger object hadn't really occurred to me, and I didn't really think it was even going to work, like it wouldn't be strong enough. But then when it was, I was like, huh. Then I started trying other objects around the house, pots and pans, and then, you know, I realized that it was pretty strong, and that's when I turned it on my own body, and then I realized I had the means to make life-size sculptures. When we do the casting process, the first thing we do is cover the model with this plastic wrap, sort of like we use for cooking. When we put the tape on, it's not gonna stick to the model. We'll just put these two together, then cover them um, as quickly as possible. If you guys stand back to back, to share like a common back, so we're not actually wrapping between them. I think it was originally some of the stuff I'd done before with like these sort of hybrids of you know, legs fused together. I think that was sort of maybe the starting point for these, the idea of like suturing people together. Looking around maybe an hour, half hour to an hour. These bigger ones like to support, like the bottom portions exactly would support like the top, they need more reinforcement. We're using these, it's uh, just acrylic strip, acrylic plastic, maybe about half a millimeter thick, and we'll put these on the sculpture. It would create a sort of lattice, but you can see, you can actually touch it. So this way it pops right back into shape. zigzag. It's easier to put it back together after because it's sort of like fitting a puzzle. And I use like a bandage scissor so that it won't cut along the skin. Yeah. Basic casting process is quite simple and I've taught it to like seven, seven year olds, you know, and up. Learning curve is really low, but I think and I don't even know if it's good, but you know, they see my work and then they see the technique and a lot of people gravitate towards doing something that they've seen on my site, which is usually like an outdoor installation. And I don't know, I always hesitate to try to like teach. I think people can look at your work and get inspired, but they look too long, they end up creating your own work. And what seems to have worked best is like I've done some longer workshops in Russia and some sometimes they've done these projects and just getting used to being outdoors and working with objects they'll in turn do another project where they may not be using this technique or this whole thing they're using a different object in a different way so it's sort of it's more that they learn a perspective than learn that seems to be the most valuable thing that they get out of it or even just learn in a different way to see the city. I think that's pretty good.